What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's going on guys? Um... It's been a while since I've made a new video. I uh, kind of was just taking a little break because I wanted to make sure that every time I put out a video, it had the right amount of content and it was actually you know, worth watching and all that stuff. So kind of been compiling questions and, and things that people have been interested in. Um, the biggest one that I want to go over today is still seems to be um, people are struggling with stock selection and you know, actually creating watch lists and, you know, stuff like that. So I want to go over my morning process, um, how to pick stocks, how to avoid them, etc. So first thing I do when I wake up is pull up Slack and I go to the watch list, right? So all I do is I go to the watch list tab, I scroll to Alex's watch list, make sure it's the current one right here. This is from Friday. So what I do is I take note of the day ones. I, for low hanging fruits, guys, for me, my the way my edge I feel like works is I strictly stick to day one and two anything after that unless it's a major runner my edge is significantly gone so I look at the the hot stocks of the day so CHCI one and I write it down in a notepad like this UIFC UONE and all those are very tough to get a borrow but like just for again just for the stance I'm showing you guys that was like a multi-day runner that was tough so those are the three hot chicks that were running on Friday. So I take note of that, and then I can pretty much at this point close out the watch list. Okay, so now actually drawing the lines and building on that. So the first one that we see is CHCI. So I pull up the chart, right? And if you guys have watched my previous video drawing lines, right, which I hope you have, that this will help you with that as well. So. A big part of low-hanging fruit for me, I think, is like the closer that the pops get to VWAP is good because if you think about it logically, this is the you know volume-weighted average price. Most of the people that are holding or have a position uh, on the long side, especially, you know, maybe if it gets back to here, they'll want to sell for break-even or a small loss. So I always try to base my lines close to that if it's possible. But going into tomorrow, again, lines it could open gap down. So this is just for today, like just for learning purposes. So I look at this, it was the hot, one of the hot chicks, it popped up, ran and dropped. So now there's bag holders for us to short into. So I see resistance at like 330s and 320. So like ideal, ideally to me, I would love to see a pop to like 320, 340, 350 as a, um, as for a low hanging fruit rate. So I'll write that down. Looking to short and bounce to 20. So that means the way I would attack that is I would have 10% um, of my bullets at those levels. Um, so that, you know, it'd be like 10% here, 10% here, 10% here. When it confirmed, I would look to add to my winner. And with a stop, you know, again, on low hanging fruits, I like to be a little bit wider with my stops, but I'd probably write down. Like I just look at this next line, right? So the way I, I do my stops are like this a lot of the time. So that's CHCI. I pull up a line chart and go back, right? Look at the previous line closest to like where I'm looking to short, and that's usually my stop. So again, right now, because this isn't loading the pivots, but going into tomorrow, the pivots will be on this, and you'll be able to actually confirm your lines with the pivots as well. But, so I kind of see this 340 line. So my stop out kind of this level here, let's see how, let's see how close it gets. 365, that would probably be my stop. You know, I'd have like a 340. 40s to 50s average. I usually in low hanging fruits have like a 20, 25 cent stop because um, I'm usually only in starter size until it confirms. So I would write that. I'd say would stop out over 365. I write that down because I want to make sure in my head I've confirmed my thought process and like where I'm going to stop out. There's no questions. I'm not in the trade thinking, shit, where am I going to stop out? Um, I, it's predetermined and it's all, you know, I know exactly what I'm doing. 
Next stock is BYFC. This one was getting crazy. So huge runner, you know, took everyone off guard. It's easy to borrow SSR. Um, I had a couple scalps on it and luckily managed to avoid some of this crap, especially leaving by zombie hours really saved you. Because if you look at this, if you left by zombie hours on the dot, you kind of managed to avoid a lot of the nonsense. But anyways, as a low hanging fruit, going into tomorrow, again, assuming this doesn't gap down or anything, I would probably be looking for, um, and when stocks are asked, like easy to borrow and you know had so many people in it involved, I try to make my pops a little more drastic. So honest to God, let me pull up the line chart to confirm this here. So if you guys see what I'm doing, right? I'm just looking to see exactly where the stock really had trouble, like where exact lines that gave it that level of difficulty. So what I'm seeing right here is resistance in the 340s, 350s, and then 380s and four. So I would probably look to have a little bit wider of a play on this because I see that level of resistance at four dollars. I see a resistance at three eighty, and then I see a resistance here, kind of like what just the line chart showed us, right? So same thing. All right down our plan. I'm looking to scale a bounce to three fifty, three eighty, four dollars. That would kind of give me that, you know, right in the 380s average, around somewhere in there. Um, I would probably go much smaller size for my first bullet here, um, just to kind of get a feeler out there. And if it worked, I would add, you know, as it broke back down, you know, red green and all that. So that was my plan there. And then again, we pull out the line chart to determine my stop. That's just how I am. So my stop, you can see this line right here is 410. So my stop would be... Would, Stop. Oh, over 410. Right, because that's how I do my stops. I literally just go line to line. If it breaks the next resistance, as long as it's not too far away, um, I stop out. If it's too far away, I size down dramatically, or to me, it just doesn't even make sense. You owe any. No reminder, this is low hanging fruit. You owe any. This stock is a little bit out of my pay grade, but I want to make a plan on it. I like to practice because, again, you know, as guys like Bao and Alex have been doing this for so long, but my time will come where I will be trading these as well. But I like to practice, right? Because I'm not risking any capital. I'm just seeing what I can, what I learn from them and all that. So now I think this thing's pretty done. I thought, I think everyone expected this dries runner. The flow's still bad. I don't think it's dead, but I don't think it's, I, I just don't think it's going to be that kind of runner, but who knows? So we make a plan for it. VWAP's around 42. So that's kind of my ideal spot, right? Like I see pull up the line chart. I see that 42 and I see 38. So honestly, I would probably be looking to short pops towards this 38, call it, what is that? 38.50 maybe? Yeah, maybe 38.50. Sometimes like with these, like the range is so big, so it gets tough. Um, I'd probably want to actually get pops towards closer to 40. I'm um, just looking at the chart. I mean, we did see this double resistance here. It's maybe 38.50, 39.50, 40.50, 50. So this is how I, this is my actual thought process. Like I look at the chart, it's not always so simple. I like to make a plan. So if I'm having so much trouble with it, I usually will either A, take it kind of off, or B, I will make a, a very general plan that I may not trade. But I will say, ideally, and again, not every low hanging fruit is perfect. I'll say ideally, I'll push to 40. 41, 42 short with a stop over 42.50. Again, these aren't my niche, so my game plan's not always perfect, but again, if I'm really just making it to learn, that's good, right? So I'll take that watch list, I will post it on a note like this, and in front of me, I will leave it over in the corner. So like if this was my main chart, it would literally, I have a separate window that I keep here. So that way I always remind myself exactly what I'm doing. I don't want there to be surprises. I don't want anything to change. It was just like that. Uh, different thought process on stop scaling when you scale or slam the bid full size. Okay, I get these questions all the time. I'm never afraid to slam the fucking bid because if I want to get in, I'm going to get in. I don't give a shit about a couple cents or paying the, you know, removing liquidity uh, fee and all that bullshit. Um, but scaling is only done for me at this point when it's a low hanging fruit or there's really broken down chart. I, like I said, I like to have the tightest entries now possible and that's been my biggest goal. 
So I slam with full size. With experience comes tape reading experience, like with screen time. So the only time I'm slamming full is when I kind of have this feeling and this sense that the stock is about to break down. And more often than not, it does work, but there is times as well when you slam the bid, it's gonna bounce back on you. So for example, if I was short right here in the 470s, let's say, I would say I was short under v this intraday VWAP, 470s, and I said I'm gonna slam the rest of my size below VWAP, this would have been the moment I would have done it. Other than that, I really don't slam like any time. Like, I mean, I, if I wanna get in, I'm gonna just hit the bid usually. Um, but again, I don't recommend it when you're starting out because a lot of times what happens is this, you slam the you slam the bid when it looks like it's gonna break through VWAP and then pops right back up and you're already full size tonight, you take a big loss. So, you know, just be aware of that. Again, it's not something I don't really recommend. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you wanna see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.